All right, so in this video, I'm gonna go over the 10 questions that I ask myself before I start a painting. All right, welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I sit, have a cup of coffee and talk about oil painting. If you're new to the channel, my name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil paint so that you can get better faster. So I think it's really important to visualize before doing anything. I feel if you can see yourself doing something before doing it, there's a greater chance that you're going to have success doing it. I know whenever I go into a painting, not exactly sure about certain things, I end up struggling quite a bit. And over time I developed a series of questions that I tend to ask myself before getting into a painting. And I thought it would be helpful to share them. First question I ask is, why do I want to paint this? You know, what is it about the subject that I'm drawn to and I find interesting enough to paint? I think it's very helpful to be able to identify what you like about something. You know, if you're walking around to do a landscape painting, you see this landscape, you're like, oh, like I like this, I wanna paint this. At first, it might actually be tough for you to be able to identify like what you like about the scene or why you wanna paint it. You, know, you might just be thinking, oh, I don't know. I just, it just, I like the scene. It's a nice scene with mountains and it's just, I think it's beautiful. But I really encourage you to be more specific and understand why you like it. It's like, well, why do you like that scene of mountains? Is it because the mountains are so tall? Is it because the mountains are so far in the distance and there's like a lot of haze? Is it, you know, the trees in the foreground that are really tall? Is it the river that's leading to the mountains? Like, what is it exactly? Is it the colors? Are there a combination of interesting colors? Is it the combination of, values that's really interesting? Is it an opportunity to do a very fine tuned drawing? It's good to be aware of what draws you to a subject because it's gonna help you focus more on that element. All right, the second question I ask myself is kind of tied to this first one, which is, I think, what is the star of the painting? I highly recommend trying to make your paintings just about one thing and trying to solve that thing at the beginning. A lot of the times this can be the focal point of the painting. It can be good to start at the focal point of the painting and build the painting out from that. And a lot of this will influence your composition because you'll want to make sure that the main star of your painting is being represented as such. For example, in this uh, portrait of John Travolta I did, you know, kind of the main cool thing about this is the light that's coming up on him from underneath. So you can see even at the very beginning stages of this painting, I was putting that in. It was very loose. I wasn't extremely specific with it, but I got it in. It was almost as if I was taking notes and I, I wanted to make a note of that light source right from the beginning. And this landscape painting here, a big part of it is depth. I have all these different levels. I got these plants in the foreground, this bush here in the foreground, and then going back, there's another set of trees. Behind that, there's some more land. Behind that, there's clouds. So when I was painting this, actually painting this on site, and when I was doing that, the first thing I did was kind of try and figure out that depth. So I was bouncing a lot between plants in the foreground, plants in the middle ground, and then the land in the background and making sure to dial in my colors and values to make sure I was communicating that depth. Because I knew if I couldn't get that down, you know, nothing else in the painting was gonna matter. All right, third thing is what big shapes make up the scene? I talked a lot about this in my last video, uh, with the landscape and how breaking down your scene into big value shapes and then big shapes with color is gonna make the rest of the painting process a lot easier. If you wanna check out that video, I'll put a link to where you can watch that above right now. And you have to identify those big shapes if you're going to plan to move them or arrange them in a more interesting way, which has a lot to do with composition. All right, Fourth thing is I ask myself, what are the easiest parts to get right? You know, I always talk about doing a painting is like figuring out a puzzle. And the more pieces of the puzzle you have in place, the easier it is to solve for the missing pieces. So right at the start, when I have no puzzle pieces down there, I choose the puzzle pieces that I feel I won't need as much help on. Because if I can get those down, you know, I'm on my way. Like I can use what's down there to figure out the missing pieces. And this can be different for each painter depending on your strengths, you know, like whatever you find the easiest to get right off the bat. You know, for this tiger painting, there's a lot of different colors and values and shapes and all this stuff going on in here. But I found as I normally do, the darkest darks are kind of the easiest thing to get right right off the bat because a lot of times they're pretty much almost black. So I went in and put in the darkest darks of these stripes first and that helped me so much for moving on to the next step, the next value, the next color, and figuring out this complex subject. For a more simple subject, this orange, you know, there's still a lot of different colors and values and everything going on here, but I found the outside of the orange peel, you know, this pretty vibrant 
orange to be the easiest thing to figure out first. So I laid that in first. And even though I did change that later on, it still was easy to get close. You know, I'm not saying you have to get these things absolutely perfect right off the bat, first brush stroke, but you're gonna be able to get close enough to it that you're gonna be able to make decisions to progress with the painting. You're always gonna to have to be adjusting things and, and redoing things. There's a phrase that writers use that they say, oh, writing is just rewriting. Well, oil painting is just repainting. Doesn't sound nearly as good. All right, next thing I ask is, what is the darkest dark? And what is the lightest light? I like to identify those early on because it's going to give me boundaries in terms of my values. I lay in my darkest dark or my lightest light or both early on, it's gonna let me know how far I can go in each direction. So any more values that I find, I make sure that they have to fall in between those. I can also relate them to that darkest dark or that lightest light. In this example of a portrait of Walter White that I did, I put the brightest value up here in his forehead pretty early on in the painting because I wanted it to be able to judge and gauge other values. And a lot of times you can put something like this in and it gets painted out then painted back in and painted out. And if you have to put it in there kind of just as a placeholder to figure things out, that's perfectly fine. All right, next thing I ask is what areas are saturated in color and what areas are more muted in color. And more specifically with this, it's the relationships of saturated and desaturated colors. Cause something is only as saturated as the desaturated colors that are around it. For example, with this still life of a Moscow mule, I had this lime wheel on the edge of the cup and you can see in the shadow of the lime wheel, the green is pretty brown down. It's a pretty muddy, not a very vibrant green, but I needed to make sure that that was like that in order for the other part of the lime wheel and the other half of the lime here on the ground that were getting hit with direct light to look bright and vibrant. I made sure those parts were more saturated to make them pop more. All right, number seven. Uh, this is probably the hardest thing to do uh, is I asked myself what needs to be simplified. An example of this beach painting here, I actually did this first on location. And then when I came back, I, I wasn't too happy with it. So I tried it again, but I realized I tried to do too much with what was going on and all the grasses and everything here. And calling back to what I was talking about earlier with knowing why you wanna paint something and kind of what the star of the painting is and, and what you wanna communicate with the painting. And with this one, it was a lot of the depth, uh, the depth of this grass going into the distance and this path on the right. And I just really wanted to communicate a sense of depth going way back into the distance, you know, to these trees and you know the little people walking on the path. So when I painted in, I chose to simplify these grasses, which allowed me to focus more on creating depth with it. I used a lot of atmospheric perspective. I kept a lot more saturated colors and a lot more uh, yellows up front in the grasses that change to desaturated reds in the distance. I think, I feel like the second attempt communicated a lot more of what I was trying to do and, and what I liked about that scene. All right, the next thing, uh, this is very important. Ask yourself, where is the light coming from? In the John Travolta painting, there's multiple light sources. There's a light source coming in from the right here. There's a totally different light source coming up from underneath. And being aware of that in, in portraits is gonna really help you figure out the planes of the face. Because for example here, this warm light coming up from underneath, it's going to only light the parts of the face that are facing down. So areas like under the nose, uh, underneath the bottom of the lip here, underneath the chin. And it's gonna help you realize what direction things are facing. You know, at first you might not think that underneath your lip right here is, is facing down, but it is, it's angled, it's angling back towards your face. It's gonna catch a lot of light from underneath. All right, ninth thing, I asked myself, how am I going to build the paint? You know, if I'm gonna be painting an area that I know I'm gonna to have to build paint on top of, I'm gonna make sure I, I lay in my initial layers with relatively thin paint. That's paint thinned out with paint thinner. Uh, it's gonna make it set up quicker and be easier to paint over top of. This is why in the initial stages of a lot of my portraits, I keep the paint relatively thin because I do a lot of building paint and building shapes on top of shapes with my portrait. So I keep the paint pretty thin at the beginning. And before you even start a painting, it's good to know what areas you're going to have to build paint on top of, because if you start out with pretty thick paint, uh, you're going to run into a lot of problems with just building thicker paint on top of thicker paint. And it can just get to be a big mess pretty quickly. A good example of this is when I was doing these roses, 
Uh, I was putting in the darks of the roses first, but I knew I was gonna be coming back into those darks with a lot of other colors. So I laid those in relatively thin so I could come back and, and lay in more paint on top of them. All right, and number 10, this is the thing I've been trying to work on personally a lot more lately, which is I asked myself, what can I leave out? The more I paint, the more I realize so much of painting is leaving stuff out. And in Richard Smith's book, he actually, he had this great way of putting this, is he said, painters don't see more than regular people. He says it's actually the opposite. We, we see less and we try and train ourselves to see less. And I've always thought similar to that. I've, I've always thought my job as a painter is to take kind of the, the chaos that most people see when they see a scene. You know, most people, when they see a landscape, they see tons of colors, tons of value, you know, leaves, all these little things. And my job is to kind of take it, simplify it, and put it on a canvas so it's more easily accessible. And if you struggle with this, if you struggle with knowing what to take out, maybe start with what definitely needs to be in. You know, going back to what's the star of the painting or you know the focal point or you know what this is the painting about. If you kind of start with what is the main thing, then as you paint, it's gonna be easier to realize when something's not that important. For example, in this landscape painting here, I did see a whole lot of you know different lights and different things and shapes going on in this big tree in the back, but I didn't want the painting to be about that big tree. And I knew if I went in and painted all the details and everything that I saw, the different light shapes, it was gonna be distracting. So I simplified it. and. I took all those light shapes out and I feel like it was a better painting because of it. All right, hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Paint Talk. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna check out my Foundations of Oil Painting course, got a link to that in the description below. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting.